We have seen that substitution is the useful method to solve definite integrals, even indefinite integrals. To explain substitution in double integral, let me proceed in four, proceed in four steps. First, I will show you one simple example of a one-dimensional integral, and then we will formulate the theorem for substitution for one-dimensional integral. Then I will show you one simple example for the double integral, and then we will formulate in the fourth step the theorem. So let me start with this quite simple integral from 0 to 1 square root of y minus x squared dx. This can be visualized. 1 minus x squared and square root of that is the graph, is the function, and this graph is a circle. So we are actually computing the area of water of a circle. We can use substitution for x being cosine of alpha. Then dx is minus sine of alpha in alpha. And we recompute the limits. If x is 0, this will be alpha, this will be x. If x is 0, alpha is by half. And when x is 1, alpha is 0. The integrated function is square root of 1 minus cosine square of alpha. And dx is minus sine alpha d alpha. <coughs> well, and this can be simplified to sine. Sine times sine is sine square. We can get rid of minus if we swap the limits. So from zero to a half. And sine square is equal to one minus cosine of two alpha half the alpha. We can factor out one half and the antiderivative is alpha minus sine of two alpha half from zero to pi half. <coughs> sine of two alpha is zero and zero and pi half and alpha is pi half times one half is pi over four. Quite simple, straightforward computation. And let me stress a few details that we will use later. If we denote this interval as d from 0 to 1, then we can write the left hand side as integral over the interval d of some function fx dx where the integrated function is this minus x squared square root of that. Then, if we denote this substitution as some function x is phi of alpha which is in our case cosine and then the derivative phi prime is minus cosine of alpha. If we denote this interval 0 pi half as h Note that I have intentionally chosen a decreasing function because a decreasing function changes the situation how the limits are ordered. 
Here, zero, the lower limit, is less than one, the upper limit. If the substitution function is a decreasing function, then lower limit results in a higher limit for the new integration variable alpha. And higher limit here results in a lower limit here. But if we denote this interval as h, we can write it as interval over the set h, over the interval h of f, but now x is phi of alpha. And to recompute the differential, we multiply by the derivative of the substitution function. When the derivative is negative, then we can swap the limits, and then we can write integral over the interval h. But then we have here sign without derivative. So if the derivative is positive, then absolute value changes nothing. If the derivative is negative, then the absolute value actually multiplies by minus 1, and this is compensated with swapping the limits. So that we can write it as integral over the interval h. So this is times the absolute value of the derivative phi prime. And later we will see this formula, this uh, form for the double integral. Here I wanted to introduce the integration domain h and d, and that we multiply by the absolute value of the derivative. If we do not write the limits, but if we write just the name of the integration interval. So that was step number one, step number two. And step number three is one simple example of a two-dimensional integral. But before we, before we continue, we can check the result using this simple geometrical formula. We know that the area of a circle is pi r square. In our case, r is 1, so the area is pi, and we have only 1 quarter, so the area is pi quarter in full agreement with the geometrical uh, interpretation. Now, consider the double integral over the set d of the function y minus x squared plus y squared dx dy and now d will be the set of all pairs x, y from R2 such that x is greater than or equal to 0 and y is greater than or equal to 0 and x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 1. That means we are considering this set quarter of the circle in the xy plane. Well, this uh, plot looks similar to this one, but the meaning of the variables is different. Here, y was the uh, function, the dependent variable. In this situation, both x and y are two independent variables and we integrate this function of these two variables. Now, instead of cutting this quarter of a circle, circle this way, or perhaps this way, we can cut a circle in this way. That means we introduce polar coordinate system.
namely a position of a point in a plane can be specified by various ways either specifying x and y the Cartesian coordinates or alternatively we can specify the distance from the origin r and the angle of this in this triangle let's call it alpha and then we have a simple relation that x is r cosine of alpha and y is r sine of alpha we usually denote this angle phi but i will use phi as the substitution function so not to mix these two meanings. If you remember the geometrical meaning of the double integral, then this is the volume of the solid bounded by the integration domain, bounded by the xy plane below, and bounded, bounded by the graph of the function above, assuming the function is positive. And then we can cut the solid into slices and we can cut each slice into columns to write the integral. But we don't have to cut the solid in slices as we cut bread for the breakfast. We can cut the solid as we cut a cake at the birthday party. And then instead of dx dy the element of the of the ceiling of the base, we can consider such a almost rectangle, but rotate it a little. And then we want to recompute the area of this element, or we want to express this area of this element. Let's sketch it in more detail. If this is R, then the increment of R is dr. If this angle is alpha and the change is d alpha, d alpha is very very small. I draw I, I, I draw it as a large angle so that it is easy to see. Then this length is proportional to the angle d alpha and it is also proportional to the radius r and if we measure the angle in radians then this length is r times d alpha the product of the radius and the length well a special case is when the angle is the complete term 2 pi then we have the line of the, the, the length of the circle 2 pi r and then this area is dr times r times d alpha. And this is an expression that replaces dx dy. Then we must recompute the limits. In this set, phi goes from 0 to pi half. R, the distance from the origin, goes from 0 to 1. That's from here. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. 0 to 1. H belongs here, 1 belongs here, right? Now we have the square root 1 minus, and x squared plus y squared is r squared plus n squared plus r squared sine squared we can factor out r squared and we multiply by cosine squared plus sine squared which is equal to 1 so x squared plus y squared is r squared so we have 1 minus r squared and instead of dx dy we write r dr d alpha
So this is the substitution in double integral using polar coordinate system. This will be easy to compute. The limits are constants. The function splits into a product of something depending on r and something depending on alpha, which is equal to 1 in this case. So we can write it as a product of two definite integrals. Integral from 0 to 2 pi, 1 alpha is pi by r. And for this we can use once again substitution, namely for 1 minus r squared will be u, so minus 2 r dr will be du. <coughs> and we have here r dr, we want 2 r dr, so we divide once again by 2, and we have integral when r starts at 0, u starts at 1, when r goes up to 1, u goes down to 0, and here we have square root of u to r dr, which is to the minus sign du, so we write minus here and we have u. So we have minus pi quarter, and minus can be removed if we swap the limits, so we have pi quarter. And the derivative of this is u, this is u to one half, so and the derivative is u to three half divided by three half means multiplied by two third from zero uh, from zero to one, which is this is one, and we have pi over six. Is it so? Yeah. And again, this is a good agreement with the geometrical picture because this function has the graph being the sphere or upper half of the sphere, the surface of a, uh, of a ball. And the volume of a ball is 4 third pi cube. Uh, pi r cube. In our case r is 1 and we consider only one quarter of the upper half that means 1 over n and if we consider 4 third pi divided by 8 we arrive exactly at pi over 6. Okay, to sum up, I have promised four steps. In the first steps, in the first step, we computed this uh, integral of function of one variable using substitution, and we have introduced some properties, some notions. Then we generalize this to a general case for the integration domain d and function f, and we use substitution by some function x is phi of alpha and we rewrite the integral as the integral over the interval h of f phi alpha times the absolute value of the derivative. In the third step we consider this double integral and using substitution into polar coordinates we can rewrite the integral in this sense in this form and then we can compute and find the result which is in a good agreement with a perfect agreement with the geometrical uh, interpretation well and now to generalize this we can again consider the set d which was here uh, that was the set of pairs x, y from r2 such that x is greater than equal to 0 uh, and y is greater than or equal to 0 
and x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 1. And then we have rewritten this as the integral over h, but now the set h is the set of all pairs r and alpha from r2 such that alpha goes from 0 to by half and r goes from 0 to 1. And then we have used the substitution function r, uh, x was r cosine of alpha and y was r times sine of alpha. In general, we can say that x, y as a vector, as a pair, is the result of some transformation, let's call it capital phi, of R and alpha, or perhaps U and V, to new integration variables. And then, similarly, as we rewrite integral of F over D, then now we have double integral of F, but now F is a function of two variables, dx dy over the set d and we can rewrite this as a double integral again over the set h this is the domain of new integration variables in this particular example it was this set now instead of f we use the substitution uh, x will be say phi 1 of uv and y will be phi 2 of uv and then Similarly, as we multiplied by minus sine of alpha before swapping the limits or by plus sine of alpha after swapping the limits, that means in general by the absolute value of this derivative, then here we similarly multiply by absolute value of the Jacobian of the determinant of the Jacobi matrix of the first partial derivatives. du dv. In our previous computation, this determinant of j was this one extra r that we have found from this simple picture. This picture is, is very useful to find this extra coefficient r for polar coordinates. In general, if we use different substitution function, then this is the absolute value of the determinant of the Jacobi matrix of the partial derivatives of this map, of this function. Phi is, has two arguments and two results. So phi is the map from R2 to R2 in the case of a two-dimensional double integral. For a higher dimensional integral, it may be from R3 to R3 or R4 to R4. Or more. 
Uh, okay, let's check this. Let's consider the polar coordinate system and let's try to compute this coefficient without this uh, clever picture. If we use that's here. If we use these two transformation rules, then the Jacobi matrix is partial derivative of x with respect to R, partial derivative of x with respect to alpha, partial derivative of y with respect to R, and partial derivative of y with respect to alpha. This is the Jacob matrix, and if we consider J to be the determinant of the Jacobi matrix, then we write vertical bars, meaning determinant. If x is r cosine of alpha, then the partial derivative of x with respect to r is cosine of alpha. And the partial derivative of x with respect to alpha is minus r sine of alpha. And the second row cont uh, contains derivatives of the second uh, function. Y is R sine of alpha, so the partial derivative of Y with respect to R is sine of alpha. And the derivative with respect to alpha is R cosine of alpha. And we take the determinant of this. The determinant of this matrix is this times this minus this times this, which is R cosine squared. Minus minus, which is plus, R sine squared. We can factor out R, and what remains is R times bracket cosine squared plus y squared, which is 1. So, you see, this is indeed R. In perfect agreement with our picture. And this is where we multiply by half. It is necessary to take the absolute value of the determinant. Imagine that we question the order of x and y or r and alpha. Why did we start with why did you start? Uh, with differentiating with respect to R. R is no more better than alpha. If someone changes alpha and R, then it swaps the two rows, and then the result will be minus R. And then we take the absolute value, which removes the minus. So the order of the variables is not important. So, this is the theorem substitution in double integral. There are some assumptions, some conditions for this function phi. We want the function phi to be injective. That means for different arguments, we want different results. We want the function to be smooth. That means continuous and having continuous derivatives. And finally, we want the determinant of the Jacobi matrix to be non-zero. Well, co uh, polar coordinates are perhaps the easiest and most frequently used substitution, but for some special situations, other functions are useful as well. We could sketch the graph of the integration domain D and integration domain H. D This is a condition for a circle and this takes only one quarter of the circle. So in the xy plane this is the set D. And we have used this substitution to transform the integral over D into integral over H. 